Hi everyone, this is Jared from The Broken Seal, and today we're going to be doing an unboxing of Townsfolk Tussle. Uh, this is a game that is kind of based on or similar to the video game Cuphead. Um, Madi and I actually played Cuphead for a little bit. She played it on her own, and then we were like, we should play it together. We played a bit of it. It is hard, so we didn't get very far. <laughs> um, and then they announced this on Kickstarter. I was super excited about it. And I did like Cuphead, it's just, you know, it was hard, I don't know. Um, so I figured a board game version of it would be more approachable and accessible uh, because there's less, you know, fine twitch movements you have to do and more just planning out your turn, which I could do. So we're gonna go ahead and see what's inside. Also, this box is very heavy and big. If you can see here, it doesn't fully close. I imagine that's because of the cardboard that's inside of it. Um, once we get all that out and into whatever it is in here, organizational wise, hopefully the box will actually sit closed. This is also the fantastic first edition. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head if they had any Kickstarter exclusives for the game um, or if the game itself was a Kickstarter exclusive, but I guess I can check it out real quick. But I do like that they have a game trays insert, so it should have good organization. So, Townsfolk Tussle. Welcome to Eureka Springs. After the death of the beloved sheriff, ruffians are uh, coming in droves to take advantage of the defense defenseless town. It's up to you and your fellow townsfolk to wallop these troublemakers into oblivion. And who knows, if you play your cards right, you may just prove yourself worthy of becoming the new sheriff. So it's a lovely co-op boss battler. Your goal is to take down four unique ruffians, each one together, each one, I'm sorry. Your goal is to take down four unique ruffians, each one tougher than the last. You'll build up your townsfolk with gear, explore Eureka Springs, and concoct unique strategies to take down even more unique hoodlums. The fate of the town rests in your hands. So it's two to five players, 40 minutes per player, ages 14 and up. Um, I did check, so it the game itself is a Kickstarter exclusive. There were stretch goals that were, you know, that you could meet during the game, but the game itself was a Kickstarter exclusive, and then they had the little caveat that if there were any left over, then I think they sell them in their own store online. So uh, I guess for all of you that are, that are watching this, if you didn't back this on Kickstarter, you can try and find a copy of it online to buy. So one of the first things uh, about the box, uh, there was a certain tier level that you could uh, back on Kickstarter. And you could put your name in the little graves that are along the uh, the outside here. Ooh, this box is heavy. So I know when I first looked at it, yeah, so there's Quack for Quackalope. Uh, let's see. None of the other ones that I can look at, I know. But because they backed at that much of a level, I feel like we should show them off just so that people can get recognition. All right, there we go. Whew, I'm gonna work out. All right, so we have our Townsfolk Tussle game trays topper. Uh, all the minis are oversized, which was something that was cool. So. That way you get to like actually take in the detail of them, especially since it's based off of Cuphead where the, you know, you're fighting these big ass monsters. So that's cool. Uh, that sound and or thing that you saw behind me was the lion, what was his name? I can't remember. The lion from the vinyl figures of the Here to Slay vinyl figures, um, which you can see in our, I always forget which way, I think it's up there. Yeah, no, it's going to be over there. So I'll link it up there if you want to see the vinyl unboxing for the Here to Slay stuff. But uh, these are all really cool. I was going to take them all out, but considering that they need to be in certain spots, I don't want to have to deal with putting them all back specifically. So uh, they're really nice. The bases feel a little thin, but... You know, then they don't bend when I do this, so I feel like they're fine. 
And just like how in Cuphead, the kind of the creatures or the enemies were kind of weird, they, you know, continue that because, was it this way? How did I have this one? Like this one here that I just took out looked like conjoined twins or, they kind of look like a uh, cat dog, but humans. This one's some kind of rooster. I think these are the player characters that you can be. Either that or they're like minions because they're not as big as these big boys here. So a good and a bad thing about the game trays insert, things have to go specifically and each one has its own spot. So the good thing about that is that, you know, everything goes specifically where it's supposed to be. The bad thing about it is that you have to find the, you know, position that it goes in and you have to remember where you took it out. That's why I decided not to take all of these out right now because it's gonna be a pain in the ass for me later as I'm trying to figure out right now where the hell everything went and I'm doing a bad job of it. It feels like this should go like this, right? All right, so that was that one. That was that one. That was that one. So then I guess he has to, yeah, so he has to go under there. So like I was saying, he or they have to go underneath this one because of a sword, their sword. So there's something to think about. Um, we've got something here. I don't know what that is. So we're going to take this out. We've got the rules and rules and results booklet. I do like that they have the people playing the game. Uh, let's see. So, a lot of rules. Although it looks like there's only 22 rules and then... Or 22 pages of rules. And then there's something that's called extra bits. So, let's see. So yeah, there's 21 pages of rules, and then there's the results. Let's see how your tale comes to an end. Oh, so like your journey as you're playing the game leads to one of these results. So that's really cool. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure type situation. And then there's the graveyard. We bow our heads to those who have perished in the dastardly ruffian attacks. Take a moment to absorb the last words and final moments. So in addition to getting your name on the box, box as one of the graveyards you got to have a little quote on there um again i'm just gonna jump to try and see if i can find quackalope so quackalope had suffer and succotash radcliffe will pay for this then there were some extra bits a quick look up thing and what i always love is a quick play guide so it has a terrain guide critical hits and then each player chooses a town folk, refuse, receives their starting gear and 10 coins, and places themselves on the buying and beaten bar. So next we have property of Bort D. Things to do, visit Eureka Spring, Springs, buy Eureka Springs snow globe, take a picture of the sheriff statue, and stay clear of the woods. Oh, this is really nice, so it's a nice map. So I think the game takes place in Eureka Springs entirely, but not sure. Also, up here, the Biformia, that's where that two-headed or two-bodied creature was, which I also think must be where the other cat-dog-looking person was from, at least. Then we've got our cardboard. Let's see if we can get these all out. Ooh, there's a lot of cardboard in here. All right, so this is at least the game board. So we'll put this aside for right now. We've got cardboard tiles, presumably for different effects that happen on the game. Uh, 
uh, pop out this one here. So this one is double sided, not all of them are, but like on one side you have like a little river. And then on the other side you have a dried up river, which looks like there's a chest in there and maybe like a plug that was keeping the river going, like a bathtub plug. Then we've got some coins, some other effects, a garden, cornfield, I was just looking to see, so on this side, there's a house. And then on this side, the same house, but it says not home. So I was just trying to see if there's anything else different. Uh, we've got some forests, a haystack. Nothing really else looks different. Maddie's gonna love, because a lot of, like, there's this cat here. She loves the art style in general from Cuphead, so she'll love this too. Uh, let's see what we got. I think that these are standees of the miniatures that we got. So I guess you could play with either standees of the miniatures. But considering the fact that, like I said in the beginning, this is a Kickstarter exclusive, and it wasn't like I could... I chose to get the minis. I just got the base level pledge. So I feel like it might have been a waste to include these if they are just, in fact, minis... standees to replace the minis. So then we have, I think this is the cellar. Yeah, so this is during the town phase. This is during the fight phase. So we'll put it like that. So fight phase, town phase. Then we've got, I believe, player boards. I can get these out. I'm slightly worried about getting all these back in because clearly there's an order to this. You know, I always respect the Wingspan box because the Wingspan box has how to put everything back into the box. So you always, even if you don't remember, you have the benefit of looking at it. And I don't feel like enough games do that. Like just a diagram either on here or on the side of the box that says, this is how you put everything back in. So these are our, I believe, our player characters. We have Quintus Bench, a light-footed all-rounder who's not afraid to swindle the peddler. And I know they have, yeah, they have abilities. So petty theft, you may take an item worth five coins or less from the peddler shop at the beginning of each shopping phase, session. And Trickster, two Moxie, swap positions on the landscape with any other townsfolk. And then they have starting gear that's unique to them as well, as well as their stats that you would track during gameplay. We have Granny Melba, Come give Granny some kisses. A hot, a hard-hitting sharpshooter who's always good. Uh, who always gets her discount. We have Norman Norman Fishboy. Apparently, I can't talk today. I don't know. Sometimes I don't feel so lucky. A depressed all-rounder, reluctantly doing whatever needs to be done. The Blopsy Twins. So I guess these are actual people you can play as. The ones that I thought were like the cat dog freaks. Not freaks. The ones that I thought were the cat dog. My, I want to say abominations. The cat dog lookalikes. Feast your eyes on this. A supportive clairvoyant with a knack, oh wow, a knack for instruments. And then we have Georgie Iron Gut. The hell is Georgie? Ergel, Gerg, Blurg. A powerhouse glutton with boundless energy. So apparently they're a royal lineage family. The Iron Guts. But as of late, the Iron Gut family members have been partaking in odd activities like lumbering around the old peat bog and eating out of garbage bins, maybe due to the virus that's working its way down the family line. Previously infecting Georgie's father, it looks like the virus has found a new host in Georgie himself. Ironically, the other townsfolk wouldn't dare mention the odd behaviors of an Iron Gut. They are royalty, after all. In order to protect its host's body, the virus inside Georgie Iron Gut has taken up arms to fight the ruffians. Perhaps the germ isn't so bad after all. So that's real weird. <laughs> This dude got infected by a germ who wants to keep him safe so they can keep eating trash. Uh, so then we have Henlo Bulwark. This is it. They found me. A skittish mender that's hard to keep down. And Yancey Plover. Quit breaking everything, dang it. 
a burly grouch who's able to reshape anything into a weapon for the right price. Let's see what else we got. I think these are the people that we fight. So we've got Pepin Milk Frog, the Dairy Boy, the Endless Horde, the Bundits, the Landscaper, Samuel Strawman, uh, the Rainmaker, Umbrello, the Performer, Virginia Fitz, the Gravedigger, Will Barlow, the Royal Tween, oh wow, the Royal Twins, King and Queen, the Innocent Deputy Wagums. You know, they like to say he's innocent, but he's got coked out eyes and the puddle of blood around him, so I don't think he's innocent. The old sheriff took a liking to Wagums. The little pup was as loyal as he was dopey. It was the perfect mix that qualified him as the right-hand man, while the sheriff could do it, could, uh, wow. Well, while the sheriff could always rely on Wagums to do the job, he was never sure how well he'd do it. You see, Wagums never played dumb. He was dumb. And he loved to play. Without the sheriff's supervision, Wagums has made some new friends in town. The townsfolk have warned him to stay away from these woofians, but they're just as playful and rowdy as he is. They even gave him these toy guns to play with, although it seems they have a mind of their own. So then we have the OG sheriff, Law Doozy. The folklore legend Hansy, the best collector Penny Pinchet, Penny Pichetti, the tourist Bort Dovis. Yeah, so that was the last one. I don't know how he's a ruffian. Alright, so we got those. We've got a Eureka Springs cloth bag. So we have a couple of them, and by a couple I mean two. We've got some standees, some starting gear. Maybe these are randomizers. Yeah, so I'm guessing these are randomizers and also like quick look stuff. Yeah, so we have town events, terrain deck, and then these randomizers here. That's cool. Uh, what else we got in here? We've got little wooden pegs to track your stats. I like that. And oh, we got something underneath here. We got big standees, I'm assuming for the bosses, like the big bosses. Which again, I'm still unsure why we have these considering we have the minis. Don't know yet. Uh, then we have cards, cards, cards. Well, I said too many. Cards, cards, and more. All right. Oh, you know what? I never looked at the game board. So we've got the game board here. We're not gonna be able to get it all on screen right now, but we have the beaten order, ruffian, and then everything else. Buying order maybe goes backwards. Uh, chump, hooligan, troublemaker, final fight. I think this is like just tracks where we're at in terms of the game. Then we have the actual area that we play in. You can see like there's some limbs <laughs> left around. And our terrain down here, 
I think this either like reminds you what the terrain is or this is the terrain that we put up. I'm not sure, but I, cause I've seen Quackalo play it, but that was a while ago. So we've got a bunch of cards down here. Uh, I think for sanity's sake, just gonna open up one. So I'm gonna open up these. I also hope that, I mean, game trays usually do fit sleeved cards, but I'm hoping that I can sleeve all these. There seem to be a lot of cards and not that many in this box of cards and things. Yeah. I don't think so. Uh, well, I don't know. You can't sleeve these, so we'll see. So, Reckless, end your turn adjacent to the Ruffian. Zero points if you achieve this. Plus two or one damage to the Ruffian. I don't know where that just went. Okay. So, look like these are, like, objectives that you can do. So, like, the Martyr, be the first townsfolk to get knocked out in a fight. You get two points, and if you achieve this, plus four gold or two damage to the Ruffian. Uh, we'll look at Magician. Have your townsfolk removed from the board without being knocked out. One point. And if you achieve this, plus three gold or, or plus three coin, plus one damage to the Ruffian. And careful planning. Complete a fight without charging your uh, changing your equipment gear. One point, and if you achieve this, plus four gold. And doesn't look like there's anything different on the other side. Yeah. All right. Uh, card quality seems good. I'm a little worried. See, I am a little worried. Like, these cards don't sit up like these do. And this is obviously too big for them, because they just fall down. So I don't know if they're supposed to go over on this side, and if they are, then why weren't they there to begin with? Like, it doesn't seem like they fit in there that well. I don't know. Maybe once I break all this down and put them into places, they'll fit better. But regardless, that's it. Um, hopefully we can get a gameplay of this because I am really excited about this game. Um, it just looked really fun. And I've heard it, like, talked about as, like, a light Kingdom Death Monster, which is even better for me because I couldn't get Kingdom Death Monster when it first came out. And now it's far too expensive for any person who's rational to buy it. So I'm excited about that. But anyway, come back next time, or rather no. If you like this, leave a like, comment, or subscribe. Uh, you can check out our description for information about our Kofi account. And come back next time for more unboxings of games that we get. Bye.